So here he is, the former UFC interim lightweight champion, Tony Ferguson. And here's a guy who a lot of these fellow lightweights believe represents the toughest matchup for them. Just hard to know what's coming. Truly a 5 tool player, and he will look to put all those skills to good use yet again here tonight. I mean, you point to the Josh Thompson fight and the beautiful elbow that he landed to split him open, and it shows you the diversity of Tony Ferguson. And you have to remember, he was a national champion at Grand Valley State University. Right. So if he needs to, he can be a guy that has the ability to take you down and just brutalize you on the ground. Not only brutalize you, but he has a great ability to submit his opponents as he showed when he won the title fight, Kevin Lee. And he is most happy when he's in a fight, right? Certainly a guy who loves to train as is well documented. Just the way he attacked the knee injury rehabilitation just shows you his true colors. And I know I speak for the MMA fans around the world. Very happy to see El Kukui back in the octagon here tonight. Well, Scousers don't get knocked out, and that has been the case for Patty Pimblett, at least to this point in his UFC career. Outstanding pedigree coming in, and he's got another big fight in front of him tonight, DC. And he's going to continue to get big fights, because when you have that thing, when you have that it factor about you, people want to tune in. That is what Patty Pimblett has in spades. But not only can he fight, no, I'm sorry, but not only can he draw people in, the guy can fight. He's a tremendous grappler, and he has confidence like not many guys that we've seen at such a young age in their career. And don't let the out-of-camp body composition fool you, because this man has a work ethic that rivals anybody in this division. Huge spot for Patty Pimblett tonight. Well, there has already been a lot of UFC history here at Toyota Center in Houston, Texas. More where that came from tonight, and we are ready to go with two of the best athletes in the sport. Our tale of the tape for this lightweight championship fight. Here's Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. <laughs> Championship of the world. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, presenting the challenger, Tony El Kukui Furiosa. And now introducing the champion, fighting out of the red corner, presenting the reigning, defending, undisputed UFC lightweight champion of the world, Pane, the Pane, Pimblet. Herb Dean, our referee for this one. Ready. Good to have you with us tonight. Of course, we are inside Toyota Center in Houston, Texas, USA. And every time I walk through these walls, I can't help but think about Gilbert Melendez and Diego Sanchez going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Back at UFC 166, remember Rogan? Oh, my God! It was the craziest fight. You could not believe what you were watching. These two guys said, this is the night that we make history. We're going to stand on a quarter in the middle of the octagon and let them fight the that they did. Houston, the Toyota Center, has been home to some of the greatest fights in UFC history. Back to the overhand now. That one's good. It won't take many of those. Oh, and he found a home for that punch again. Let's get busy with those hands now, man. Come on. Nice defense there. Huge block. No defense. These two are going back and forth. Nice connection there by Tony Ferguson. You're probably glad you never had to prepare for a fighter like this in your day. I've never seen anything like that. I'm not sure there's anyone like that going up in the weights. Tony Ferguson does not give you any idea of what you're facing. When you're in there, you're confused. He doesn't give you any type of pattern inside the octagon. The strikes continuing to pile up. 27 total strikes have now landed for Tony Ferguson. the right punch and follows it up with a nice left hand. Nice sequence there by Ferguson. 
He loaded up there on that high kick. Just out of range with the big right hand. Oh, he lands a huge move to the bottom. Just hard to know what's coming. Ooh, heel hook attempt now, and it looks locked in. Oh, I don't know. That heel hook looks tight. Good job by the champ there. Sliding back up. Nice transition. Pimlet's got the full mouth. Great defense by this fighter. Tonight, good work here by Patty Pimble. Another ground and pound strike lands. Oh man, what a strike from the bottom. All right, so he can't get it here again. Good awareness by the defensive fighter. Beautiful ground strike right. landed. Right. Second round, straight ahead. All right, now we check out some of the action from that previous round, DC. How about the display of striking? Just high level. I mean, you would think that we're watching a K-1-level kickboxing match opposed to being in the UFC. Both displayed great technical skills, unbelievable striking. You ready to fight? You ready? Here we are, early round two. as he lands another leg kick in DC. Now we're seeing visible damage as that leg starts to redden up. And now you start to see the damage. And now you start to see the limping of the opponent. Watch as he gets kicked in the leg, he's turning away. He can't even get any pressure on his front leg anymore. He is beat up. That leg has been tenderized by this young man. They're so evenly matched, and they're going to attack. Oh, great head movement there. Slips his head off the center line, and defensively, that's exactly what he's doing. Oh, he is stunned, trying to recover here. That one was thrown to end the fight. Yeah. <laughs> Well, he has really picked up the pace here in round two. Much more aggressive than we saw in round one. And now starting to find himself in the pocket. Massive head kick. Oh, and he tags him with the straight hand there. Beautifully done by Patty Pimble. Immediately gets the underhook. Over and over, this guy's getting hit right in his face. It's pretty swollen now in that jaw area. It doesn't appear to be affecting him all that much, but he's absorbed a lot of strikes to the head. Gotta figure out a way to raise the guard and be more defensively sound. High volume on both sides, and both of these guys are giving it as good as they're taking it. Sharp and lands upstairs and lands flush to the body. When they land perfect, that is the reaction you're hoping to get. That one landed perfect in this fight. Maybe stop very soon. Right hand over the top. One minute to go in round two. Well, not exactly what we thought we would see out of this jiu-jitsu fighter. He's had a lot of success on the feet, and I think this is why sometimes the film can arrive 
if you want to have a lead. Absolutely. I mean, you think you're coming in here to fight a grappler. This guy looks like a boxer tonight. His hands have looked crispy. His kicks, everything that he is doing has worked. And I think this is partly due to the fact that you think he's trying to take you down when in reality, this guy can fight everywhere. versus Ngannou, and you know they still haven't found Alistair Overeem's head. All right, let's look back at some of the action. DC, a huge round, particularly when it came to that liver strike that really buckled his opponent. It buckled his opponent bad. I'm surprised that the guy's still standing. I don't know exactly what his corner can do to try to bring him back. When you take those types of strikes, you generally don't recover fast. Let's see what they do to try to bring him back. Well, he hasn't really showed any signs of slowing down tonight. He continues to connect on a high volume of strikes here. Oh, pinpoint strike lands there, and not going to help the swelling upstairs. I love this accuracy, this ability to get his shots to the target right away. And you see it in the swelling that is forming on his opponent's face. The single collar tie. Oh, he tags him with the straight hand there. Nice job by Fergus. Beautiful timing and placement to land the flying knee. Oh, and he continues to pour it on. We mentioned earlier the aggression with his striking. Got to be careful to not gas out here, but at least you have to admire the approach. Three minutes to go in round three. He does a great job of getting that leg kick to the target. All right, so now we start to see some redness underneath the elbow. You gotta think he's gonna continue to attack the body with all of his strokes. Well, his opponent has not done anything to deter him. He should keep doing this, keep going. Oh, guillotine, guillotine here! Oh, that's nice guillotine there. Oh, gives up on the submission now, so preferring to maybe get to a dominant position instead. Armbar tip. Ooh, looks like it might be locked in. Once he gets you going, he's got so many ways to finish the ball. No way! He got out! This is a guy that never gives up on himself. He was able to clear his head, defend the arm bar. The fight looked done. He lets the fight on. Nice defense. Pimlet's nose is bleeding now. Yes, looks as though he got cut by one of those offerings from his opponent. Half guard now, not a fighter you want in half guard against you for the bottom fighter. What does he need to do? He needs to secure his underhook. He's got to be fighting, fighting, fighting for underhook. One of the most key things you can do as a bottom fighter stuck in half guard is try to frame. You frame and push your opponent away from you. By pushing him away from you, he will then want to come back into you. Right. It's like when I push you back, you want to go forward. So as he comes forward, hand goes off the face, let it slip into an underhook, build up to your elbow, then go chase your single leg. This is high-level grappling, John, from a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt named Daniel Cormier. <laughs> Big ground and pound. Waning seconds here of round number three. Patty Pimlet getting peppered here from the top. He's got to figure out a way to cover up. That's three rounds in the can. We're headed to the championship rounds. All right, so there's the end of the round. You see the blood trickling down as he makes his way back to the stool. Cut on the bridge of the nose, or so it appears from the strike in that round. Cut man getting right to work. All right, so back to the stools we go. They say defense wins championships, and he has not defended well tonight. He isn't trying, or at least it doesn't seem like he's trying. He has got to move his head. He's trying to react when the punch is already coming, and that's not working. If he takes many more of these shots, this fight is going to be stopped due to the swell. Ready. Ready. Go. We have arrived at the fourth round fight schedule for five five-minute rounds.
another strike to the body. Really? Oh. Hurt him again, bro. Oh, he's in real trouble now. All right, seems as though his sole focus is attacking that cut. And man, it's getting bad now. A lot of blood flowing. Yeah, as it should be. Right, he should be focused on it. Oh. Back to his feet. Strikes continue to land. He passed the half guard. He's getting the ball here. Take a deep breath. Just over three minutes to go. Let's go. Oh, trying to pass here, but Dikembe Matumbo style, Block. he gets denied. Block. Great job blocking that pass by the bottom fighter. Now inside the closed guard. And he's going to try to find ways to pass and move to a submission. He passes the half guard. Most fighters will tell you offensive wrestling is the hardest, most exhausting thing. Especially if you're just running the guy over, John, and then he just gets up. While working pretty effectively from the top here, nice ground and pound by Ferguson. He can truly do it all. That was a slick transition. <laughs> yes, yeah, smart adjustment. Yep. Well, you know he's comfortable fighting off his back. Nice transition there. You call that a reversal? Yeah, you turn your defense into offense. Defensively, you switch position and you go right on the offensive. That's exactly what he did. Oh, and he's able to land a strike there from the bottom. Nicely done by Ferguson. Great job landing from the top position. Oh, staying busy from top position. He lands another ground strike there. All right, side control now. Right. Horn sounds for the end of round four. Hey, stop. All right, so what a round it was for. Multiple knockdowns. When we sat down with him on Thursday, he said, when I touch guys in this division, they go down. And he proved prophetic. That's exactly what happened in the previous round. The guy has lightning in his hands. Every time he is landing, he is putting his opponent on his butt over and over, knocking him down. He has not found the finish, but he needs to stay patient, find the perfect shot, hit him with that kill shot. You get that kill shot off, and there will be no more getting up. Ready to fight? Ready. Here yeah. we go, fifth and final run. All right, now we go inside the octagon. Bruce Buffer has the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Dean has called a stop to this contest at 30 seconds of round number five. Declaring the winner by knockout and new UFC lightweight champion of the world, Tony El Kakui Ferguson.
All right, so a big win for Tony Ferguson tonight. A lot of lightweights will say he presents the toughest matchup for them, and that was certainly the case for his opponent tonight. Absolutely. He's so long. He's so tall. He's so different, right, in the way that he approaches these fights. But he also is just a great competitor that will do anything to win a fight in tonight.